What we've got to do here, right, we've got our main flame returns coming in through the wall up there. So we've got our heating flame return coming in in 22 millimeter. The reason I've brought it in in 22 mil is because we've got three radiators to feed. Now using the sort of smaller bore pipe after that for three radiators is a bit dodgy. So we've got one radiator going under the window upstairs in the main bedroom. So that's under the window there, just a standard sort of double panel convector. Uh, right at the other end there, we've also got a standard towel rail going in as well. So we're gonna shove that that in after that we're feeding a radiator for a ground floor porch just dropping down just out of shot behind you so what i want to show you in this video is pretty simple firstly how you can push pipes through a wall without getting debris in the end of the pipe you'll be able to see when we reduce down to a different pipe size and why i just want to show you how this particular pipe system works and show you how the actual clamp system works on it as well so firstly, let's actually have a look at the pipe that we're going to be putting in. Butte Line's pipe and also their fittings they have quite a few advantages over the current spectrum of plastic pipe products that there are in the industry. Certain types of pipe use reconstituted plastic. With Butte Line, you've got virginal polybutyl beads for this stuff, all right? So it's never been used for anything else. Also, it's a five-ply barrier pipe as well. You might have remembered back in the day, there was problems with um, non-barrier pipe, basically letting air into the water system, basically you're building up sludge because obviously you've got air and water together and causing problems like that because there's a barrier in this uh, that stops that actually happening any hot water pipes that you put through or any cold water pipes that you put through always put insulation on anyway uh, that's another major advantage for this the actual fittings you can insulate really easily 100 within the requirements that the uk have for plastic barrier pipe to be used on hot and cold potable water systems and also on heating systems as well we're going to feed our two 22 mil pipes through and then our two 16 mil pipes through. That's another slight difference between uh, Butte Line and standard pipe is the fact that Butte Line comes in 16 mil and 22 mil. Very importantly, when you're pushing pipes through a wall or anything like that, is to make sure that you protect the end of the pipe. Make sure you use a little bit of gaffer tape or a little bit of tape, anything you've got, even a little bit of cellar tape, something that's going to stop stuff going down the end of this pipe and blocking it up later on, okay? So what I'm going to do is feed this in now. And what I'm going to do is just leave that so I know I've got a good foot or two left through there in a minute and I'm going to do the same with this pipe here now this is where I want to address two more quick things number one on the other side there isn't actually a brick on the lower part of that hole there so all we're doing is going straight through wood so usually if we were going through brick wall I'd be tempted to sheath the pipe a little bit more try and protect it for a start when we have a look at the fittings of this stuff in a few minutes you'll notice that the actual seal is made on the inside of the pipe and not on the outside of the pipe like a standard rubber ring fitting and that means that you can push it through a wall and if it does get slightly scored and let's face it even the best of a score plastic pipe when we're pushing it through a wall sometimes you don't have the worry after that of the o-ring not sealing around the outside of the pipe and actually having a leak afterwards i've had it happen let's pop down get cross-legged and just sit down and have a look at the fitness themselves so as you can see for a start there's loads of different type of fitting for this stuff you can convert it over easily to 15 mil compression there's all types of different iron fittings soldered fittings obviously when you do a solder fitting just take off the plastic collar and the aluminium collar before you do any work like that uh, and then you just solder that on itself wait for it to cool down and then boom you're easily converting over to plastic then i think because of the clamp system it's permanent you can't strip it down which some people might think is a bad thing but as a professional plumber i, I think it's a good thing uh, it stops people stripping the stuff down that i've just installed so if you look closely at the pipe just here, you'll see there's some nicks, and those nicks correlate to how far you want to push one of these fittings on. So you push this one on like so, boom, there it is, done. Now all I need to do to finish off and make my joint is get our 16 mil, open that up, pop that into the fitting just like so. You leave about two or three mil from the end of the actual aluminium, and then you crimp it up just like this. There goes six tons worth of pressure, easy peasy. You basically hold it, I usually count to two or three, and then let go. And there you go, that is a watertight seal. So there we go, now I've got all my pipes kind of first fixed laying in the fits where I need to do them. Now I've got to join them together in this terminal up here above me. Two makes two, and four, scrub the G on his belly, meow, meow, meow. Right guys, so the good thing is, now that we've got our two T's in here for our hot and cold, so we're gonna do, we're gonna run them across there and drop them down here, and then our Aqualiza box is gonna sit just on the wall just there out of the way. So, I can just cut two rough pieces of a sort of rough 
length of what I need. As you can see, it's really, really easy for us to do up those two tees just like that. We just clamp them up nice and easy, nice and quick, and boom, that particular joint is done. You never have to worry about it again. Also, I think that shows you how small the actual clamps are themselves. They're literally the size of a standard set of grips. I've heard some people say, oh, you know, the clamps look a little bit big. They're not. So we're now at a stage in this job where we've got all our pipe actually in. We've got all our pipes roughly up to where we think we know we're going to put our holes up. You know, we've left a foot or two over or whatever. That's where I now am going to make my tails going up. Every radiator I fit, I am going to use copper tails going up. So what I usually do is count how many copper tails I'm going to have. So on this job here, if we look at our overhead map, we've got one, two tails just going up here in copper. We're going to have two tails sticking down there. We're gonna have two tails sticking up as well for the towel rail in the ensuite. And we're also gonna have two tails sticking up behind the vanity unit as well. So what I then do is basically grab eight of these converters. And before I do anything else, right, I'm gonna pull off the plastic bit and just pop that to one side, pop that in my pocket, don't lose that. Then I'm gonna get myself eight lengths of copper. I'm gonna leave a good foot's worth of copper on each one of them. And I'm basically gonna do a standard solder fitting into these, let them all cool down. Then I can pop my plastic fitting back over that. And then we're ready for the next stage where we go upstairs and actually drill our holes down into the unit and cavity where we are. Below. So then guys, to get my centers, oh, it's actually quite easy on this one. I'm at my center here, 72. Get my Justin Bublé out. About to give this girl a shout. Run that up here. So the reason I've got the centers here is because we've got our windows up here and I want to be center of this window. So now we know we've got our center there. And then obviously I've got me a little bit of paper where I've written down my pipe centers for this radiator we're putting in. So we've got a 500 wide radiator and the pipe centers for that stick out 54 mil out of the wall. So I'm gonna go 54. When we actually drill down, it's when you see whether you've hit a joist or something. It can be a bit of a pain in the ass this bit, but that's life. And then 455 five divided by two, 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 seven, five. And that's the actual pipe that's if I do that now, that should read 455. Okay, cool, so there, now we know that I've got my mark on the floor here. There's X marks the old spot. Now, the secret. Get yourself a drill, okay? And don't drill yourself a 16 mil hole. Uh, don't tie yourself up, okay? I've got, what we've got on here, I think I've got that 20 mil bit on here. So we're gonna go down, make sure as well before you do this, that you're not gonna hit any wires or anything like that. You don't wanna upset the sparky, or and, and you don't end up dead as well. That's uh, one thing I definitely don't recommend happens. Uh, and then, so what we're doing, let's just go down through here. There you go, there's one hole. Right, what I'm gonna do now is just drill the holes over there for our hot and cold coming up and then pop over to the other window and drill our holes as well for that radiator. You're gonna watch it in quick time. So then guys, now that we've got all our holes in, it is literally a matter of just getting all our pipes around, getting them clipped, getting them cut to length, getting our copper stubs that we've made up already in, put up and crimped, and then we are done. Basically, watch us in nice speedy motion, just like this. And while we're doing that as well, I'll put the little map up to one side so you can see exactly where we are and what we're doing. So then guys, time for a couple of explanations as to why we've done certain things on this job. Number one, we've got some pipes on here. These pipes are gonna get clipped back, okay? Just like the ones up there. You might be wondering why has he not just put some elbows there going across to his hot and colds? That's purely because I just wanna keep the flow rate up. So yeah, that's the same for this bit here. So you see they just sweep across there. All our pipes will be insulated, so there won't be any problems with them touching the wires. Uh, and it's the same for what we've got going over to here. Right then guys, so there you go, all done. You've seen how we've used this particular pipe system to first fix everything that we've done here. Remember guys, if you like the system that I've shown you here, do get in contact with Beauty Line. I've left the link in the video description below so if you had to have a look there anyway remember guys have a great day and i'll see you in our next video hold down